what does it mean to be fashionable? Today we're going to talk about that as I share my top tips for looking fashionable over 50. Hello ladies and welcome to today's video. My name is Kay and this is Dressed for My Day. And if this is perhaps your first time here, I want to welcome you. I'm so glad that you made your way here. My focus here at Dressed for My Day and at my blog by the same name is really on women over 50, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. And I'd like to encourage us to get dressed for our days uh, in a way that feels authentic to our personal styles, to who we are, our lifestyle, the region of the country or the region of the world in which we live. And uh, also though, feels fashionable and so that we can show up in a big way, right? So today let's talk about what does it mean to look fashionable? And then I do have some tips. I think I have seven tips that I believe are really the key to pulling that off, to looking fashionable, especially over 50. Because let's face it, we have a different set of circumstances when we get into our latter years. We can be vibrant. I believe we do not need to be hiding in the walls. <laughs> I don't believe that we need to disappear. I believe these can be some of the best years we have, but there are some keys to looking fashionable at this age that are a little different than they were in our 20s and 30s. So first of all, here's how I determined what it means to look fashionable. Let's just say, let me give you a little for instance. Let's just say I said to you, have you met June? And you said, no, I don't know June. I said, well, June comes by, she's, she's in our Bible study class and she's been coming several weeks now. And I talked to June, she's a lovely lady. I love June, uh, really sweet, very gracious. And she is so fashionable. Now, immediately, what comes to your mind? How do you picture June when I say that? When I say to you, somebody that I've seen several times, not just once, but several times, is so fashionable, what comes to your mind? And that's really kind of where I launched off my thinking on this today as I thought about tips for looking fashionable. And I think that a fashionable woman, first of all, she is usually somebody, I think, in our mind who has put outfits together. Like, so she's taken some time and some effort with her appearance, right? She didn't just you know, roll out of bed, throw something on and go. <laughs> she's, you can tell she's put some effort in. The, another thing though, that I think we associate with being fashionable is someone who has pretty clothes, who has, who has stylish, nice clothes. And, but here's what I've determined ladies, is you can find pretty clothes, stylish, nice, current, uh, well-made clothes at all sorts of places. Now, you can also find ugly clothes <laughs> at all sorts of places, and you can find cheap clothes, and you can find clothes that don't look great, okay? And this is not a matter of budget or your spending patterns either. You can find pretty clothes, lovely clothes, even quality clothes at lower prices. But I do think it's harder, right? We have to really look, we have to look at fabric content. We just have to look at those quality markers such as the seaming, the way things are, buttons, how they're attached and, you know, just those things that let you know whether or not this piece is quality. But let's face it, it is harder to find pretty attractive clothes those places. But I do believe you can be a fashionable woman and shop at those places as well as the others. It just takes a little bit more work and a little bit more creativity. I do believe that. But I do think when we think of a fashionable woman, we do think of somebody who has pretty clothes, who, who wears nice things. And then I also think though, that we think of someone who really just kind of has a, a sense of her personal style, right? Like, because there are all kinds of fashionable women. You don't have to be fashionable and look like Ralph Lauren models with, you know, everything's kind of muted and woodsy and, you know, like polo field type thing, you know, but you could also be fashionable and wear very frilly, you know, roughly uh, feminine things. So you could be fashionable and wear like athleisure type things, and especially these days, you know, so you could be fashionable and wear the, the full gamut of, of different styles. But I think that when we think of a fashionable woman, it, it is usually somebody who we think they know their style, they have a sense of style in whatever of those genres 
uh, whatever kind of clothing they wear, it, it, they just kind of, they, they've got some good taste, right? As we get older though, I do think some things change. I think for instance, there are certain colors that look better on us. There are certain styles that look more kind of age appropriate. And, and hear me out, I'm not saying that you necessarily age out of something, but you know as well as I do that some of the things that I used to wear in my 20s and 30s and teens and all, I just don't even feel like that's, they don't even represent me anymore, right? They, they don't look like me. In fact, I think that's why some of the things that have been trending lately, like ruffles and puff sleeves and all, have been kind of awkward for us. And I, I've tried the puff sleeve thing here. You can see me doing that. And I like it okay, but you know, I don't know. It's not, I, it's kind of, got to have to, <laughs> having to work on that. So there is a little bit of a jump between what felt appropriate or comfortable or authentic in our 20s and 30s and now in our 50s and 60s. So I've got some tips for us today on things that, that I think will help us to be fashionable in our 50s and beyond. Here we go. Number one, we've got to keep our denim current. Now I know I'm gonna get some rocks and stones <laughs> thrown my way, just try to make them little teeny stones, okay? Because the truth is there are some jean silhouettes and styles that are of yesterday and there are some that are more current and honestly i know i know you're going to say but the stores still have skinny jeans i know they still have them because it's okay to wear them like for instance with an oversized shirt or with your riding boots but for the most part ladies skinny jeans really are out of style now i know you'll even see some videos and you know people are saying skinny jeans are not out but they're saying that because they're wanting you to, to like them <laughs> the truth is skinny jeans do not look as fashionable as the more current silhouettes such as the wider leg the little bell bottom kind of thing the little demi boot cut going on ankle length is very in and of course there are some things that are in like the rips and and the and the distress thing is kind of coming back in as well as patchwork now that's not to say that you have to swing that direction you don't have to go that modern but what can you do and you know I've, i know you've heard it if if you've been here long you've heard me say this over and over that the most transcending style of jean is just a good straight leg jean and the good news is is those are very on trend right now so to keep your denim current i would just go for some good straight leg jeans you can wear a nice dark wash if that's what feels authentic to you if you like a little bit more refinement then a nice dark wash is going to be nice light wash is very in so if being current feels very authentic to you then go to those straight uh, light wash jeans talbots has some great ones i'm showing you here I, i'm ordering these because i think these are really smart they also had that patchwork thing though going on by the way look at that but get you some modern jeans that is tip number one for looking fashionable over 50. tip number two for looking fashionable over 50 is to beware of over accessorizing now, now maybe that applies to everybody i don't know but i think especially us women over 50 we maybe have kind of, we, maybe we came along in a time when it was very popular to just add on lots of stuff, lots of big earrings and necklaces. And, you know, if you grew up in the 80s like I did, then bigger was definitely better. And always <laughs> hair, makeup, puffy sleeves, jewelry, everything. But right now, what's really trending is either layered chains, those so still little, you know, tiny, petite little chains are still very on trend, layered, layered bracelets, layered rings, even multi earrings, but all very small and dainty and pretty that look genuine that way. Or another trend is just a big chunky gold or silver necklace. I have several of them. I love them. It's just a great way to knock out that, like you've accessorized your outfit with that one statement necklace, but it's just a nice gold chain and you can call it a day. So we want to beware of over accessorizing. So kind of a rule of thumb is if I wear that big chunky chain necklace, then I usually wear some little small stud earrings. Or if I wear bigger hoop earrings like I have on today, then I don't even have on a necklace and maybe I'd add a bracelet or a watch. So really be careful about over accessorizing. Of course, that also includes things like belts and scarves and even a style hack kind of counts as a point of accessorizing. So we just want to be careful not to overdo it. Tip number three, invest in a few pair of high quality, comfortable, great shoes. 
and let that be it. You know, so many women our age have foot issues and I understand that and maybe you can't wear heels or you can't wear things with a narrow toe box. Maybe you can't wear things with low arches or no arch support. Uh, the good news is there are so many brands now that are carrying really good, comfortable shoes. I've got a couple of shoe brands that I work with that have larger toe boxes. I have some that have a lot of support. They're just really well-made shoes. The Paul Green shoes, they are really soft inside. My Ally shoes, they have great support. They're very soft inside. They have nice wide toe boxes also. They fit you really nicely. They have good sizing. Uh, so many shoe brands are really going out of, the, uh, out of the way to really make it accessible to wear their great shoes. So my encouragement is to just invest in two or three for each season or maybe two seasons in a row. You know how that goes. And wear those. Just wear those and wear those. You know, get them in nude colors, flesh colors for you uh, or colors that you would wear a lot. If you wear a lot of black pants, get you a pair of black pumps or whatever. But just let that be it. But the higher the quality, uh, the, the better the appearance of those shoes, the more it's going to make you look fashionable. Bad shoes can ruin an outfit. Great shoes can really elevate an outfit. Now look, if you are one of my viewers who has some really serious feet issues and you have to wear orthotics or you have to wear certain kinds of shoes all the time, my tip for you, and you've heard this before, is raise the, the viewpoint up. So accessorize up here, minimize down there, and then just move on and, and listen to the rest of these tips and forget about that one. Tip number four, especially for us ladies over 50, is we have to mix those classics in our closets with some modern pieces. The good news is if you wear a lot of denim and you have those current denim jeans, then there you go, you're, you're done. You wear your classic blazer, your classic bow neckline uh, blouse, you can wear your classic pumps, you can wear carry that classic handbag. As long as you're wearing that trending current denim, you're good to go. Now, if you wear more classic trousers, and I love to wear mine too, then you really do need to throw in a more modern piece. It could be as simple as that chunky gold necklace. It could just be some nice modern heels with a nice block heel or something like that. It could be a really current blazer, an oversized blazer. So many ways to do this. Just make sure you always throw in something that's a little bit more current than the rest of your classic pieces. Number five, I think fashionable women know how to kiss. What did I say? Yeah, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, sweetie. So I think fashionable women have a real knack for knowing when to stop. You know, one of the things that really does translate as chic or put together is effort. So when someone can look at you and tell, hey, she put a little effort into her outfit. She did something there. She didn't just throw on some pants and throw on a shirt and put on some shoes and walk out of the house. She did a little something there. I don't quite know what it is, but she did something there. Like she put a little work in. That translates as chic and fashionable. But to be fashionable, you also have to know when to stop. So just really wanna keep it simple. So one of the ways you can do this, of course, is to wear more solids. I, I love prints, I'm all for prints. You're gonna see me wear some, I, I do wear prints but I try to only have like one thing that's a print usually and then everything else solid. If I do a little bit of that mixing the prints, which I just think is fun, then I still want it to be subtle, like a subtle plaid here and a subtle floral that I've mixed together. So for the most part though, we wanna keep it simple. So that means not just simple as far as solids instead of a lot of prints, but also simple lines. You know, wear a blazer with simple lines, wear trousers with simple lines. You know, and if you do wear one piece that has a lot going on, for instance, right now utility things like utility jackets and utility pants are really trending. So when you wear some utility pants, they have a lot of pockets on them, right? Pockets and zippers and things. Then everything else in your outfit should probably be more simple. Like you would maybe wear a, just a very simple turtleneck, very close fitting turtleneck top or just a simple sweater and you know, a classic, you know, just solid sweater with those um, cargo pants or those utility pants. So if you have a lot going on in one piece, make sure that everything else in your outfit is very streamlined, very simple. Kiss, keep it simple, sweetie. 
Tip number six to be fashionable over 50 is to choose your colors wisely. Now here I'm gonna kind of even go against myself because I love wearing black and I'm just, I'm just gonna do it. Black is very chic, it's very elegant, it's just really elevated. So you know, it that may not really necessarily go with my coloring, but I do think it elevates an outfit. On the other hand, I do think as we get into our 50s and beyond, we just have to kind of take inventory, right? We have to realize our coloring is changing. So my hair is kind of a silver and blonde going on. I'm in the process of going gray. I don't really know what it's doing. It's kind of motley, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely, you know, really light colored. My skin's light. My eyes are light green. So everything about me is light. I have low contrast in intensity. Everything is light intensity. So really no contrast in intensity. So when I take things like that into consideration, it has really caused me in the last year or two to shift to wearing more outfits that are also low contrast and intensity. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm going to direct you to another video up here, but also down in the description box, where I've talked about really the number one key to looking fashionable, and that is being aware of contrast and intensity and how that affects you and how you want to put your outfits together in light of that. Now, that's just one part of coloring, though. The other thing about color is I think it's important for us to be aware of the colors we choose. And there are just some colors that are more elevated. They look more, uh, not old, uh, not elderly, <laughs> but they look more mature. And therefore, they just look more authentic to our age. And they look, they're gonna make us look a little bit wiser actually. They're, they're going to make us look like we're not playing around in the junior department. You know what I mean? And that's not to say you can't shop the junior department. If you're of a size, I know some of my petite viewers are shopping the junior department because that's where you find clothing your size. I get that. But we're talking about choosing colors that are rich, choosing colors that are um, that have a little sophistication to them. And I think this is one of those things that maybe takes an eye, but I think an eye can be trained. So I think if you will maybe pay attention to maybe you know a fashionable woman or two in your church or in a club that you're a part of or in your neighborhood, if you watch the colors that she chooses in her outfits, I think you will begin to see what I'm talking about. There's just something about choosing colors that look, uh, they resonate more with uh, maturity and, and they just look uh, make, will make you, I think, look more fashionable. Let me know what you think about that. Do you think I'm, you know, spot on on that? Or do you think, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? You can let me know that in the comments below, politely, very nicely. And then tip number seven is kind of the opposite of kissing. <laughs> it is to make an effort. You know, ladies, I think a lot of times when we get into our 50s and 60s, some of us, not all of us, not all of you, but some of us, me included, had kind of lost our way. I know I had, I, before I began this, before I started my, my blog five years ago and this YouTube channel three years ago, before I started the blog five years ago, I had kind of lost my way. I'd gained some weight. I had just gotten my kids out of the house. And, you know, life was changing. There was some, my body was changing. So many changes were going on. I just kind of lost my sense of who I was, where did I fit into things, what kind of clothes should I wear? I just really didn't know. And that can cause us just to kind of like, just phone it in. We're just not gonna make much effort. But a fashionable woman makes some effort. And you know, really a little effort goes a long ways and it really can make a difference. So here are some ways to make an effort. Add that third piece. You know, don't just go out in jeans and a t-shirt, but put on either a denim jacket or a utility jacket or a blazer or, or even a bomber jacket is really in right now. But add that jacket, even on a hot day, you know what? For the most part, that really doesn't add much heat to add a little lightweight linen jacket this summer does not add heat. It actually just protects you from the sun a little bit and it really gives you a little bit more style and will make you look more fashionable. Adding that third piece, 
accessorize, do accessorize. Don't let my warning to keep it simple and to not over accessorize, don't let those warnings keep you from accessorizing. At least add some earrings or add a necklace, maybe wear a ring or two, um, you know, add a belt. So add some accessories, wear a scarf. Scarves are really in too, so wear a scarf. Coordinate your outfits. I think just the effort of coordinating things, making, you know, kind of looking at the colors in, you know, your blazer and your pants, your shirt or whatever, you know, pick out even a graphic t-shirt that looks like it would be fun and it would be complemented nicely by that plaid blazer, you know, just, Put a little thought into what works together nicely. And if you've built a wardrobe that has a limited number of colors in it, then that's gonna be easier for you. And you know, I talk a lot about that. So if you've not already done so, I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel, but also go down in the description box below and subscribe to my blog, to my email newsletter, so that you can also get links to my blog posts because there I talk a lot about how to really coordinate your outfits, how to thoughtfully put things together. And then of course, another way to put a little effort in is to also do a little something with your hair and your makeup. I don't know of a single fashionable woman who has a bad hairdo, okay? You got to put a little thought into having a modern haircut, a modern hairstyle, and putting on at least a little bit of makeup, um, just even a little bit of lipstick, okay? Just that little bit of effort will really help you come across as fashionable. So those are my seven tips for looking fashionable over 50. Let me know what you think about these. I'm open as long as we can be polite and friendly in the description, in the comments below. I'm all for your comments. I love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching today, ladies, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye now.